arguments about things that ain't even worth it. It has nothing to do with your life as a Christian. People, I've seen people get in arguments, I brought this up before, people get in arguments about whether they were dinosaurs or not. <laughs> what? I mean, nothing wrong with the historical part of that. You understand what I'm saying? But if it's going to cause me to get in an argument, whether there was a dinosaur or not has nothing to do with what I'm, how I live today. I can care less, as long as there ain't nothing today. I can care less. You know? <laughs> you but we, people get, I mean, that's just some of the silly things that we get, and that's over, over the world, per se, that, that we argue with. Avoid stuff. Avoid arguing. People even try to argue with you about the word. I don't argue with people about the word. God's word proves itself. Mm -hmm. And all you're going to do, I think people get, get into arguments about the word and get angry and want to fight. Mm -hmm. over, over God's word. See, you have to avoid that kind of stuff. It ain't worth it. Mm -hmm. I could men do. So, I'm going to use this as a better word. One guy was cussing and cussing at you. And do it. And do And do it. And do it. And he finally calmed down. Now, most of us, somebody starts fussing and cussing at us, we're going to react. It, you know what I mean? That's just, but I, I'm trying to he just avoided trouble. That's what you have to do. You have to avoid trouble. Avoid arguing. It ain't worth it. It is important in our Christian walk that we work through our disagreements. But when we begin to bicker and, uh, and, and argue over things that are not central to our Christian faith, life, faith and life, we only provoke anger and hurt each other's feelings. But I'm going to tell you something. When you hurt somebody, that's something that's hard, hard to mend. Yes, when a person is, is hurt, and, and, and some hurts are deeper than others. I shared with you before that even though we go and apologize, and they may accept your apology, the pain is still there. Mm -hmm. It's like putting a nail in a board. When you pull the nail out, the hole is still there. Even the word you said has spoke that hurt, and that hurt is still there. Only God can heal that hurt. That's right. You probably had people say something to you that hurt you. And if you reflect back on it, it probably still, you can rehearse that hurt. You can bring that hurt back up. And, and it feels just as worse now as it did when it, when it happened. But thanks be to God that through him we, we are delivered. We're healed of all hurts. And, and, and healing begins with forgiveness. If you're hurting, healing begins with forgiveness. You have to forgive the one that hurts you if you don't want to heal. Amen. Amen. Instead of arguing and disputing with folk, we should, we should be gentle and kind to them. Verse 24 says, And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach patience, in humility correcting those who are in opposition. Now you see that? In humility, humbly correcting them, not with an arrogant attitude. If God perhaps would grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. That's the bottom line of having a good name, a good reputation in the community, is to bring those that are in, in, the, in Satan's trap, that are snared by the devil, to the light. But we can't do that if we got a bad reputation out there with them. If we, if we, matter of fact, I say this, if we got a bad reputation out there, then we in Satan's trap too. He, he has ensnared us. So how can I get you out the trap if I'm in the trap? You ever seen crabs in a bucket? One crab trying to come out? He can't come out because he in the bucket with them, so let's put him right back down. And you ain't leaving him without me. <laughs> As godly leaders, we are to be kind and gentle, patiently and courteously explaining the truth to others. We are to listen to people's questions and treat them respectfully while avoiding foolish debates. If we conduct ourselves in an honorable manner, those who oppose us will be more inclined to hear what we have to say and perhaps turn from their error. As leaders, we are to have an honorable conduct. We are to have a good name. So I encourage you, Amen. when you're out there in the community, make sure that people respect you, have, have respect for you. They may not agree with your doctrine, but they have to respect you. Don't get involved in the sinful things that they're involved in.
so that when they do try to accuse you, there's no evidence. Amen? Praise God. We're going to take a break here, Pastor Chuck.